Well, hello everybody. Hi guys. I, uh, I am I'm the commentator. I shouldn't be introducing y'all, but we have the lovely Arborellian Cherry. If you want to say hi. Hey. Hi, I'm Cherry. Hey, I'm Arborellia. And now we're gonna have a lovely PK scramble race for y'all. So, you know, this is an Earthbound open world randomizer. I am not, we're not the world's most knowledgeable person in the world here, but you know, I'll do my best here. Um, if our runners are ready, I know the marathon would probably love to move on, um, to or at least stay on schedule. So, y'all ready? Do you have any opening? I comments? am naming people right now, but I will be shortly be ready. Excellent, excellent. And so, once everyone's got their names, their dog's name, their favorite food, and their favorite thing, then we will move this on as soon as possible. Or at least get started, not move on. We're not cutting this run short, but yeah. All right, so I assume that you count us down and then I hit mute and deafen, right? Yeah, y'all should mute and deafen when I when I count us in. Are y'all? I'll wait for y'all to be ready, mm -hmm. and you just give me a sign. Uh, I should be good now. Okay. Awesome. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get started on go. We'll do five, four, three, two, one, go. So we'll do five. Four, three, two, one, go! Good luck. Alright, so our races will be getting started. I'm very eagerly awaiting where we're going to be starting here. And that's Nessa's house. I guess they do not have random start on, which uh, would put you in a random part of the world. Uh, instead, we're going to start at Nessa's house, which has a free item. You can also talk to Tracy and get a soundstone, which you won't need in anything but a mystery seed because it'll tell you your goal and they know their goal they are playing on race settings which is either you need to have four sanctuaries down and um four sanctuaries down and defeat gygus i believe it's five sanctuaries and magic hand if i'm not mistaken or just finish six sanctuaries and all of those can be your goal which is pretty cool so if you think you could just do another sanctuary instead of actually going to fight the final boss of the game that is your play it's a lot quicker, honestly. So our racers are going to head up towards the uh, the, sh the uh, house over here that should give them a teleport spell as well as a check over by the um, the meteor. And my apologies if I forget or just guess at random words here or locations and names. I know this thing. Ha Wait, I do have the name of this thing, isn't it? It's the... Is it Liar's House? Okay. <laughs> I opened a tracker for myself so I can see what's going on. So they're going to make their way into there, take a few easy combats. It looks like they're getting some green swirls, and if you get a green swirl, it means you can uh, you can just immediately win the combat and not actually have to go through it, which is amazing. The regular gray swirl just means it's a normal combat, and if you get a red swirl, it means the enemy gets a surprise round on you. And it all comes down to like what way you're facing when the enemy touches you, or how strong you are. So we're going to see Cherry checking the first thing in the game here and see what, uh, should be a teleport, I believe. To see what, what this character's name is Liar X Exaggerate. Amazing. That's a teleport to Lost Underworld, which is a really cool thing to get right away. Lost Underworld will immediately give you access to one of the, uh, one of the shrines. Or what is this called? The, the, I am forgetting the name of the MacGuffins, but one of the places you need to beat the game. And we're going to see what the meteor check is, and that's a yogurt dispenser. Your sanctuary. Wow, you think I know this. So the yogurt dispenser also will um, uh, d -d 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 not really do anything for them right away, but it will help them out when they get over to the Tenda village if they end up there, which if you get this item so much earlier, you're, you're probably going to have access to it. Cherry diving right into Lost Underworld, doing a few checks here. Uh, Arborelia should be getting the Lost Underworld check here. Their options at this point are go through Onet and try to do some checks there. And there's a there's a surplus of checks in Onet, honestly. Uh, is the yogurt curse? I don't think it is, but it could be. And I I'll be honest, I didn't see them go into buzz uh, do the buzz buzz check, but that could just be me. Runners also starting with a teleport to Saturn Valley. Now that we can see their teleport menu, so. Arborelli is going to go straight to Saturn Valley, which um, 
You know, you don't, you don't. What can you get here? You can get a few things here. Never mind. Mm -mm -mm. I am forgetting stuff. But there's a lot of checks, there's a lot of towns, and also free healing, which also you can get at the house, so it's not exactly that exciting. Terry is diving into the volcano, which is the first your sanctuary here, the Fire Spring, as it's called. Uh, this, I honestly feel like, is the play. Just get that out of the way right away so you're not forgetting to do it later, but also doing as many things as you can early on is not the worst play in the world. Especially with shopping to see what is for sale. Elia just doing some, uh, some selling here as Cherry runs through the fire spring. Opting to go with the yo-yo. I don't like slingshots and yo-yos as weapons. They have a specific chance to miss. I like my baseball bats. Elia equipping up before she actually goes into anything. I don't foresee Cherry having too many problems here, but we'll see. If she does get creamed by the first year Sanctuary boss, then Elliot would have definitely made the right choice to go shopping a little bit here. Interesting to see both of the runners have opted to just dive into this world and start doing checks instead of going to lower Onet. Just free real estate. Well, it's not real estate. That's a different part of the game. Alright, Elia doing the lower O-Net checks now. Chari is slowly making her way up a volcano, which I end up getting lost in. And we're doing the library check, and it is a signed banana. The, uh, the signed banana also gives you access to, um... Oh, what was it? No, I'm getting it mixed up with the carrot key. <laughs> um... <laughs> The signed banana will get you into a sanctuary place in one of the uh, in one of the towns there that none of them have access to at this moment, so will not help them out too much. Running around, probably going to take on the first boss that she has access to, which is in the arcade, to get the Mare's Gift. Um, so we should be seeing a... Uh... Oof! Tracks back in front of the Sanctuary. Okay. Yeah, no. Never punish then. The only thing she's missing is armor, and I, I don't think she's going to need it too much. The Titanic Ant is going down pretty quickly. It's a very lucky first boss to get, because it is literally the first boss of the game. And that's the department store spook for Arborelia. She's got to fight two bosses in a row here. And that's the Sanctuary for Cherry. Now I can see her retreading a lot of the same places that Arborelia has hit. Because Elia is probably going to get some sort of progress out of Town Hall. And the department store spook just creams her. It's rude, honestly. Now, I believe our players have easy deaths on. And what that means is that when you die, you don't just outright lose everything. Or not, uh, I phrased that wrong. You don't, you get a free heal and all your friends get healed and you get a free restore. That's what I mean. Been playing too many mean video games lately. Honestly, it keeps the pace of the game going very well. It removes the need for hospitals for the most part because the easiest way to, to heal is to just die. And Cherry is entering a meme already. And she is entering not... The... Not the bees! The meme has no effect on your video game, but it is encouraged to enter one. It'll come into play a lot later, but I won't ruin the surprise. 
but it is not anything that will logically change what you're going to do in this video game. <laughs> but I do love how in this, uh, in the PK Scramble community and in all the races I've watched, people actually just take time to write out something into the meme category are into the meme requests, they don't just hit like A and progress. And honestly, I respect that. It's it's very, very good. Cherry retreading a lot of the ground Arbor Elliot did. I'm what I'm feeling like Cherry could probably defeat the, the apartment store spook and do the mayor's check at this point. But we'll see how this turns out. I mean she doesn't really have any more options unless there are more I didn't see the buzz buzz check from either of them. Not saying it didn't happen, but I definitely didn't notice it. And so Arborelia entering her volcano, Cherry returning to Onet. She's got lots of towns to check. She'll probably be fighting that same boss that Arborelia got murdered by. And Razors, at this point, are running out of logic. Uh, they're not out. Of logic they're following things that the logic is sending them into but they are running out of options for the most part so they are getting down to their last few checks and if at any point you do want to interrupt me with a donation or a blurb i am all ears but otherwise i'm just going to keep talking Oh yeah, no, all good. I'll just go ahead and do a quick little burp for Nami here. Nami envisions a world where all people affected by mental illness live healthy, fulfilling lives as part of community cares. If you'd like more information, visit Nami.org. Beautiful. Mr. Baseball Cat for Cherry. I believe Arborelia checked out that uh, little uh, treehouse there, which will always give you a... I don't know if it's always, but I always tend to get a free equipment item out of there. Elia working her way through the volcano full of angry shoppers. as Cherry makes her way to the video arcade. You know, it took me forever to realize that um, this town, the first three towns, first four towns even, are called one, two, three, four for the most part, between Onet, Tucson, Three, and Foreside. It never clicked that is one, two, three, four to me until literally a few months ago. <laughs> and that's after years and years of playing this game. And grind it up pretty intensely for a while. Or as some people call Onet Want. Oh, that's a Kraken as the second boss. Kraken can be very mean. Every time I run into the Kraken, it's very scary. Okay, Cherry just one-shotting the department store spook with a baseball bat. All right, let's go. Moving on to the Kraken fight. Barely any damage. One shot to the Kraken. The Kraken has been defeated. And we will see where logic sends us next. Uh, Arbor Elia is teleporting out of the fire spring right now. Um, we have a flag set on right now called teleport from anywhere which lets you not have to just manually run out of the run out of the shrine or sanctuary you can just teleport directly from there as long as you have room and our tracers will always have the second teleport ability so they run in circles and you don't even need to have a runway for you earthbound fans will remember your first teleport spell that you get has kind of a runway to it and you need to make a room that you can actually do it and if you hit anything, you bonk, and then you, you know, light on fire, more or less. That's a meteorite piece. That's a required item to beat the video game, uh, if they're going to do the four sank route. So they were going to teleport to Saturn Valley, and that gives them access into uh, one more check from the Star Master inside the phase distorter. Still also just following a breadcrumb trail of one item at a time. Not really getting options yet. So while we saw things divert a little bit in the beginning in terms of their opening maneuvers, we are going to see them converge and probably take the exact same steps until they start getting some options on what they can do. And we are getting the teleport to Four Side. So welcome to Four Town. 
this has got a bunch of checks we can do now and options. We can end up at the mole mines if they feel so intrepid. Um, I like the mole mines personally. There's another sanctuary available to them. Because they have the signed banana, they can do the sewers. And uh, I believe it's, what is that, Magna Hill? As well, there's the Montoli building, which will give them a character. Uh, the character might not be helpful, but there sure is a character up there. It could be very helpful. And if they do to the department store, it'll tell them what character's up there. The department store is an optional dungeon uh, in this randomizer. There is never a logic inside of here. There is, however, an entire heckin' mall, and usually some decent gear out of it if you really want to run through it. And as well, you can do all of Moonside, too. One of my most memorable parts of this video game. What is in charge of the department store today? Oh, it's it's a mini barf. All right, there's a little barf in your department store. All right, trying to follow the text of what's in there. Let's see. The sage will be at Montolia. Okay. I rarely go into here. That's either going to be Pooh or Apollo. I'm pretty sure it's Pooh, Poo, but I'm not sure. <laughs> But I'd honestly go up and grab it if I were running, but... I do not recall which one the game will call the Sage. But there is also a check up there as well as, as well as an item. Cherry doing some shopping now that she opened the mall. Arborly going to be getting her teleport to Foresight momentarily. Getting some decent gear out of here, too. It's a good maneuver. Elia getting a repel sandwich. Extremely important unless you're very good at dodging enemies in the end game. Repel sandwiches replace skip sandwiches, because as you can see, we're always running. And uh, the skip sandwich in the vanilla game will make you run the speed that we are moving by default. And so they replace the skip sandwich completely with the repel sandwich, which will prevent enemies from spawning. But if they're already spawned, they'll still be there. So at the very least, you need to walk away a little bit and come back. All right. The trout yogurt dispenser getting us access to the Mon uh, the Montoli building. <clears throat> Elia also defeating an eel of some sort here. Heading up to the department store, if I'm not mistaken. Cherry going straight into the Dinosaur Museum to do the next Sanctuary. You do have to pay your entrance fee, though. Do not cheat your local museums. And this person here will be looking for the signed banana. Signed by the... beautiful Venus. So there will be a check in here as well. So the Forside Museum sewers, when you complete it, you end up with one check and one sanctuary. And that one check here is something I skipped a very long time ago in a raid, in a, a run of this, and spent forever looking for it. Until our rally is like, so did you ever get the item in the, in the uh, dinosaur museum? And I'm like, wait, what? So we'll see what Arborelia decides her next move is after shopping. Cherry trying to do some dash strats for what it looked like to skip some enemies by using the teleport maneuver and bonking on purpose. A bit of an advanced strategy to dodge enemies. Just destroying the Disk of Beauty. Which this seed does have generated enemies in it. Which means there's a brand new set of enemies with their own attacks and abilities and stats that are not local to the vanilla game. But they fit in very well, honestly. Lots of shopping. Eager to see what item Cherry pulls out of here. There's our sanctuary. See who our boss is. And that is the second sanctuary, obviously. 
And it's a cop in the sewer. Not very Captain Strong. Alright, so we'll get our sanctuary here and an item. And I'm going to do my best to pay attention to the item. The text goes by pretty quickly sometimes. The randomizer did just add something recently for when you get a teleport, the text takes just another second or two to pass before it goes away. Specifically for marathon and race commentators. Tendekraut. So we still can't get to Tenda Village, but we do have Tendekraut now. Oh, that's not the... My apologies, that goes to Lost Underworld, and you give that to a talking rock. I get it mixed up with the Book of Shyness constantly, which is the thing you do give to the Tenda Village. Yeah, Cherry immediately going out into Lost Underworld to turn in her, uh, to talk to her rock friend. And it looks like Elia's going up into the Montoli Tower to get her party member. Which is patrolled by flies today, it looks like. Usually there's robots in here. And that's a great charm. Security flies. Getting caught by one of these security flies gives you this countdown of 10 seconds before they even fight you. It just takes forever. All right, Cherry getting a teleport to three. Not the most valuable thing in the world there. There is a... Well, there is a character, so... Your mileage may vary. But really, that's all we're getting out of our Teleport to 3 currently is the character. And she opted to skip, um... To skip the character in the tower, so... See how important she's finding them. Well... <laughs> given that she's immediately in 3 she is going to follow this strange lady into a room and get kidnapped. By a bunch of presents and a painting. And that's... oh, that's Paula. That's a great get. And Arborelia picking up Pooh. You do need Paula to beat the game if you're doing the Four Sank Path. And you get thrown in jail, but the prison cell is locked from the inside, so you can just open it and leave. Elia getting Pooh and teleporting out to Want? I don't know. Okay. So we have Paula. I didn't see what Paula... Oh, Paula doesn't have an item in her, in her pocket. I didn't see what Pooh had in his pocket. Because your uh, Pooh and Jeff both come with an item in their pocket. It must have been the key to the shack, it sounds like. Because here we are, at the shack. Paula just comes with a teddy bear. This is probably going to be our third Your Sanctuary location, uh, looking at logic. Which now we see our runners have diverged. So skipping out on Pooh is going to be a really uh, detrimental situation at front. I imagine she will go up and get him at some point, but we'll see. Cherry running around. Threed, there's not much to do here. You can't fight a boss. You can't get rid of the zombies. She's just doing some shopping. We have not seen Moonside from anybody. We have the ability to get to Summers now that we have uh, the spaceship in three. I believe I thought we need the spaceship part for that. I don't know. Why can't we get to Summers? Ah, uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. And as well. Jerry went and checked our talking rock check as well already. I think I'm having a, a dicey time in this place, and it is her third Your Sanctuary, from what I presume. 
And when I when I say first, second, third, fourth, your sanctuary, that's just the logical order that the game expects you to play this in, or how early they show up in logic. And so your third, your sanctuary is going to have stronger enemies in it and a stronger boss than your first and your second, your sanctuary. It is not too uncommon for people to wander into the, uh, like, you know, fourth or fifth relatively early, depending on what chain of logic that they start following. Cherry heading up into the Montoli building. She'll get her poo and her access to her third year sanctuary. And while we are 23 minutes in, and we're talking about the third of the fourth big MacGuffin objectives, that doesn't mean this race is nearly over. It could be a, a lot of work to get to a fourth one. A few items will get us there immediately. But also, our characters are relatively weak, and Gygus will just eat them. Alright, Tulip fighting a large pile of Pook, Puke, getting its revenge for the department store, or not. And getting third, your sanctuary. Wait a minute. Was that not the boss? It's been bamboozled. Oh, yes, it was. T Rex bat? Steed's not over till we see a Franklin badge. Yeah, T Rex bat. It's very loud. All right, now we've got two large piles of puke. Things are escalating. I don't like how they're yellow. It's too real. Cherry getting accosted by security bees. And recruiting Pooh, getting her key to the shack. And we'll probably be heading straight to the shack. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not what Pooh has in his inventory. He's got the UFO engine! I take it back! <laughs> you just get the key from doing the building. So now we double have access to Summers. To the Year Sanctuary for Elia. Oh, it's oh oh it's Diamond Dog. I hate this dog. This is this dog is the bane of my existence. Or Carbon Dog. This is fourth. Ah. So there's a third Your Sanctuary that both players have skipped past and headed straight to the fourth one. Uh, that's got to be a moment of like oh dear for Elia, especially seeing Carbon Dog, which is uh, terrifying, honestly. So this dog has multiple phases. Uh, it'll be this fiery, angry dog here, and then it'll eventually turn into diamond and have a reflect shield on it. Uh, Elia is just going into auto fight and doing her best here. Probably going to go check out a different line of logic first before she comes back to this angry doggo. You cannot pet dog, uh, carbon dog. All right, she is going for the second your sanctuary. So if that's your sanctuary number four, hmm, that means the mine treasure or Fort Moonside or the uh, Summers check, the Stoic Club, probably has access directly to another sanctuary. And this is going scary fast. Elia finding a bear in the sewer. Trying to despawn the bear in the sewer to get a free item here. There she goes. That banana better have been worth it. <laughs> All right. 
Defeating a bear is always a sad time. Don't hurt your bears. Just don't do it. It's very mean. Elia headed to the second to your sanctuary. Cheria working on her fourth. Uh, she does have a full part. Oh, a foolish party. Jeff is being left out of this one for now. Um, which there is a fun line at the end of the game about thanks for leaving Jeff out of it. If you uh, start to go towards the Gagas fight without him. The developers of this random did a really wonderful job of like writing custom dialogue that feels very in the vein of this video game for characters. It's really, really, really well done. Pretty newbie friendly too. Elliot tends to roll random seeds with random settings. And they're always cursed. Alright. Elia hitting a cop with a T-Rex bat. Should go down pretty quickly. And we'll get her two items there. I believe Tenda... Was it Tenda Crown here? As Cherry works her way up to Carbon Dog. We'll see if Elia does Moonside or the Mines before she starts to go over to uh, the Lost Underworld, but I have a feeling she's going to go straight to Lost Underworld, because it is a very quick check. Fortunately, a bit of a dead end up front, but that's okay. Uh, Cherry getting a heads up that zombie paper is in Moonside. I believe that was the zombie paper. Still, zombie paper won't do much for us, so Moonside is a dead check, more or less. If I read that correctly. All right, Elia getting her next character, which will be Paula, and this is a phenomenal move. Cherry getting into fist fights with giant piles of puke again. Kidnapped by two centipedes and two presents. Anyway, here's fourth year sanctuary. Probably saying heck at the moment because it's Carbon Dog. Let's see shout out how she fares against the lovely and delightful Carbon Dog. 101 damage to the Sage. Well, I guess they're named after flowers, not and plants and stuff. Not the Sage. That's why I was confused by the thing we got earlier. Elia getting into a fight with some, some angry looking scorpions here. All right, dog phase two. Attempting to pet the dog and getting her attacks reflected. Everyone's poisoned, people are hurt. People are getting bit. Hanging in there with healing, though. Buttercup barely saved by that. Running out of uh, power points. Trying to find an option now. Is it prey time? Hitting bit again. Attacks deflected. Shield's gone now, though. Getting crit by the dog. No one is petting the dog today. Spicy fight. Cherry also probably going to take another course of action before she returns back to uh, Carbon Dog, Diamond Dog. Just a quick reminder, we have a donation incentive still ongoing for Crunch Trigger Just a Time later today, Northern Ruins. We're at $15, we're looking for 200 so yes, get those donations in. Please do, Nami's an amazing cause, and you'll be donating to a good thing and to make stuff happen in your favor. It's 
All right, Cherry heading into Moonside. I thought this is the check we got told was zombie paper. Maybe I misread that text box, because if this is zombie paper, then this is literally nothing. <laughs> yes. You definitely cannot pet the dog in Earthbound PK Scramble, but the dog will pet you. The dog is on fire and or very coarse, so it's not comfortable. Alright, we're going into Moonside on Cherry Side. One of my favorite sections of the game, and something that when I used to just read Nintendo Power all the time, I would be like, oh, this is really cool. This place is all neon, knowing nothing about it. And you know what? When I got here the first time I played this game, it was very exciting. Getting some decent spells on the characters, too. Someone is casting Rocket, which is just using one of Jeff's bazooka attacks. Because the uh, the abilities, like the Jeff items, and all of the spells are shuffled based on... shuffled amongst the characters. Elia taking a hint. And getting directed to Dusty Dunes. But first taking a brief moment to have a moment with a butterfly. So Ch Elia headed to Dusty Dunes to do the mines. Uh, Cherry moving into Moonside, which I I'm going to pay attention to because I swore we saw it was a dead check. But there's not a ton to do. We can go to Summers. And uh, what the Hintman does is, from what I understand, he finds the lowest check in the logic that you haven't done and tells you to where it is. So if you missed any, like, Sphere 0 checks and Sphere 1 checks, he'll tell you where the low the next Sphere 0 check is. Something along those lines. It's not exactly going to be, like, something that gets you unstuck, but it is going to be something that you may have missed or forgotten about. All right, Elia fighting the five Master Belches. I like the mines because I think it's a decent experience and also just fun to fight five bosses. <laughs> oh, apparently the Sage is just getting very angry at, the, at this boss. <laughs> Who doesn't like gross out humor and he's going to make it known every time you fight Master Belch. Getting a thick fry pan, which I don't know if that's an upgrade for Paula or not. This is really the third strongest Master Belch now. The runners are definitely getting a little low on checks again. The only options being Foreside, Summers, and this. And Summers just having one check for you. Two, really, because you can get to Scarabba. Like, if you if you go to Summers, it opens up a bunch of video game, and it'll get you into Scarabba. Scarabba, you'll. Hmm. I don't think you can get. Do you need an item to get you through? You do need the pyramid key to make anything happen in Scarabba. That's right. So it's more or less just a dead end, but some checks along the way. Also the best music in the game. All right, Cherry, you're heading outside. Wait, did you get teleport here too? I don't think so. There's a monkey here. It has run into a wall. And now we've got zombie paper. Which will clear out read. It'll get rid of the zombies. However, all that does is give us access to Saturn Valley, and we already have access to Saturn Valley. 
so Cherry heading off into the monkey caves. Not the monkey caves, sorry. The monkey caves is a much worse place that we'll hopefully never see. The, the mole caves. Both of our racers just desperately looking for the piece of logic that'll get them to the third sanctuary, and I'm almost guaranteeing you it's going to be in here. Elia taking an exit mouse, which immediately exits any dungeon. With teleport from anywhere, this is less valuable, but also it's fun to have a bunch of mice in your pockets. And now with how fast this text scrolls, it's very easy to miss the hints you're given, which is likely why Cherry ended up in the uh, three zombie or in the zombie paper check. Because this text does fly by, which is both a blessing and a curse. It is a skill you learn as you play this randomizer. So you just once again shouting at more master belches. Jeff still MIA. And that's a toothbrush. Will we see Arborelia brush her teeth? Brushing your teeth is an optional mechanic in this video game that doesn't really do anything for you. Oh, there's a toothbrush use. But the game will judge you if you don't do it at the in the ending. <laughs> Hygiene is important. Brush your teeth. Also, Ellie is kind of flush with teddy bears at this point. Teddy bears just being an additional party member that takes no, no action other than to be something to be hit. Which is extremely useful when enemies just start attacking the bears instead of you. Cherry working her way through the mole caves. Very excited to see what we're going to get in here. Oh, they tell you what we're going to get in here on the outside, and I didn't look. Before you go in, there's a person right up front that'll say, Hey, I'm mining for this key item. And because I'm a very good commentator, I did not look at that. Elia using an exit mouse. <clears throat> and time for a photo. Everyone, please, chat alike. Fuzzy Pickles. All right, let's see what Elliot gets. Ooh, a jar fly, honey. That will get you into the Grapefruit Falls factory. That is your Milky Well. That is your third, your sanctuary. It also gives you access to Tucson if you like to walk. So I'm willing to bet Aurelia is going to teleport directly to Saturn Valley and use that. Whew. And I'm... Nope, not sneezing today. There it is, Saturn Valley. Elio's headed right into the factory right now. Which will give her access to the upper part of Saturn Valley, which is a handful of checks and a... Uh, and is your sanctuary, which will be the third your sanctuary at this point, just following the logic of it. And I'm willing to bet the item that you might get out of this your sanctuary location, or an item in Tucson, will get you to your fifth your sanctuary right away. And looking at the your sanctuaries that are left, the steps and the rainy circle, Lumen Hall, uh, and whatnot, it might be worth it.
No need to enter the password and sit in the door for a very long time. This uh, factory is full of yaks that have strong opinions on Tendercraft. I'm sorry, they're buffalo. And while we're just perusing through here and cruising, because there's a bit of work until Alia actually gets to the sanctuary, if our host has anything to say, I welcome you to speak. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just drop a little blurb about what we're doing here with this marathon, such as uh, mental health and illness, of course, of things are many random mania staff and administration have touched throughout their lives. Dammies was chosen for this event due to, uh, as the first one, due to the amazing work they've done. Also, this is also being done in memory of OPT Lawyer. Thank you, thank you. All right, chill. Uh, Cherry is retreading, retreading ground. Elia is in new space trying to fight the uh, <laughs> the buffaloes that run this factory. It just looks like it's populated by a bunch of buffaloes and flies. And yes, the rapid belching that happens with the super fast text is just very good. Oh, getting a green swirl, but there are two enemies in this combat, which means she needs to fight it. However, it's going to go by very easily. All right, Cherry's going to get her, uh... I forgot the name of this item already. <laughs> we just... <laughs> but it's a good item, I promise. Oh, the fly honey. Great. Right. And we have a boss that I don't think is very that bad. Thunder and Storm. I've never really had to deal with them in a way that I needed to think too much. But a shield will help you out. But she's probably at a point where she's strong enough that auto fight might even win this. Yeah, there we go. Carbon Dog beware, because we're probably going right to Carbon Dog after we get our thing. Well, we still need to do the Saturn Valley Cave and whatnot, but there's a check up there, too. Cherry using the zombie paper, which unfortunately will not help her much. And we now know how to teleport to Winters. Which is going to be our Jeff. Well, not specifically Jeff, but also a teleport to Winters does not help us much. There is a free key item there. Honestly, probably worth checking if you want. While looking to decide if you want to do a fifth sanctuary. <laughs> she definitely will show those zombies who's boss. So at this point, Elia and Cherry are probably deciding. Given with the information that they have and the item sets that they currently have. Do they want to just go and do a few loose checks before they go ahead and go straight into Gygus? Because five sanctuaries and magic ant will get you there. However, we do not have access to magic ant, and that can be lost pretty deep in the logic. But depending on your items you get, it might just be worth it to go and get your next two sanctuaries. It's a gamble either way. The one guarantee you have is that your um oh the the third strongest bigger bowl thing is here as our, as our Sanctuary boss. I can't imagine Elia having trouble with this thing given her relative strength levels. Or it can crit the teddy bear and murder it. Yeah, can this team even beat Gygus? Which, if it's possible, it's gonna be dicey. One thing you can be sure of is Gygus is going to be somewhere around level 30. Arborelia getting her Sanctuary up here. For better or worse. Well, not the Sanctuary, but Gygus being level 30 for better or worse.
teleporting to want to send Carbon Dog a lesson. Teach Carbon Dog a lesson. And then we'll see what her next play is. Because given what I've watched, I don't feel confident in a Gygas kill. But she's much better at this than I am. Cherry not far behind, especially, which is especially impressive given the extra checks she's done. <laughs> and the the music you're hearing is an MSG pack made by Arborelio that features a lot of the music of Katamari. And uh, she ends up making a lot of Link to the Past uh, MSUs. And what she learned here is that uh, this, this game has a ton of music. Elia getting the hint about Moonside. And it takes a whole lot more music if you're going to make an MSU one. Arborelia heading back to Carbon Dog, Diamond Dog. Cherry moving her way through the cave to get to her next Your Sanctuary. This has been a bit of a back and forth a lot of the time. Alright, so we are seeing retreaded paths right now. I think Arborelia trying to use... Oh, she's just instantly winning fights. She is around level 27. She might be able to take on Gygus. Depending. Jeff's not exactly that valuable sometimes. Uh, he's really good at items. And depending on what gear you have for him, it can be good or bad. What they'll need to do is find access to a character, which means getting to Winters to recruit a child. Is that Winters? I don't remember. But not Winters. Getting up to, uh, b -b 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 what's the Dalam? That's it. And also the child in uh, Happy Happy, which nobody has access to. So right now we don't really have easy access to another character. Or at least we don't have any items sending us there. But sometimes you end up with all four children pretty quickly. Sometimes you end up running around with two of them for a very long time. But at this point, we don't have a lead on another one. But if one of our checks gets us to Dalam or Happy Happy, then we'll probably end up trying to get something. Dalam would be a free child, easily. And then if we get to Happy Happy, that's going to require an item also. Oh no, we're being haunted by a ghost too. Carrie getting her third year sanctuary. And probably going to head straight to Giant Step as well. There is also a Winter's Check that's free and can be done at any time. but it's only one check. As well, there's a check waiting for us in summer so we can do it any time. And you know Tucson, but Tucson's a bit of a walk. You have to come back from Saturn Valley and walk all the way there. And Tucson, while there is going to be one free item for you, also has the uh, Berglund boss, the Berglund Park. And the thing with Berglund Park is that that boss can be anywhere in Logic, usually. So sometimes that boss is just like... Sphere 7, 8... <laughs> usually the race seeds go to about Sphere 4 or 5. Alright, in Phase 2 of Dog, are we petting the dog today? I think we're gonna pet the dog. Our, our races are very much so in a level where they can pet this dog pretty easily. It's going to put up a fight, though. 
It's like we're blowing up the dog. Any win is going to be a win that feels good. Ideally, your party members stay alive for it, though. Got lots of rocket attacks, though. There we go, the dog has been pet. Ellie is sitting on four sanctuaries and now has to make some decisions. Will she go straight to Winters and do that one very free check? Because you just got to walk into a house directly next to you. The Stoic Club takes a little back and forth walking, but it doesn't take very long. And uh, I'm willing to bet no one's going to go to Tucson. Unless they find a very easy way to get to Tucson. And what I would do is not relevant. It's about the racers, not me. But they certainly have their options. Since they added alternate victory conditions, I do uh, I do enjoy not fighting the final boss. Because <laughs> he can be very intimidating. Elia going to Saturn Valley, it looks like final boss is the play. Which is probably the right move. It is two more sanctuaries deep to actually get to anything meaningful. Unless we find a way to uh, to magic ant. Which we're not going to do in winters, that's for sure. And we're not going to do in summers, that's for sure too. Hell, you're taking $20,000 out of the bank to buy uh, is it going to be Horns of Life? Basically, she's buying a set of items that will help her safely get through the end of this video game. And you don't realize how hard and rare healing and uh, revive items, specifically revive items, are until you play this randomizer. So those are Horns of Life for sale for $1,780. Those will revive you. She's opting to equip her characters, which is probably the better move. Cherry's out in three. Running to Tucson. N nope. There, she figures it out. I say, I think she's trying to run to Tucson, but running from three is going to be a tough time. She just might be going in for the final boss. All right. Not even going to gear up, it looks like. Just going straight in. No shopping, no gear. Diving in. And... Which is pretty intense, honestly. <laughs> So if she can pull this off, this is going to be amazing. We have a race on our hands, friends. Ellie is far more equipped at this point. However, Cherry's got guts. Cherry diving into the final walk. Dodging enemies as best as she can. I don't think she's got any repel sandwiches. I believe two DXs, three DXs will get you through this without a fight. And we'll see how Elia Fair is immediately munching on a, a repel sandwich, I imagine. So she's just gonna cruise. These refuel robots are miserable. Or the nuclear robots. I hate them. And Ellie's getting a red swirl from it. Oh dear. Well, at least they're military octobots. Also not good. 
opting to fight. Bad things are happening to both parties. Alright, robots down. Level up. I think those are going to be two Octobots. Is that just the exact party Elia fought? Yep. Elia taking a fight. I think she only had the one repel sandwich. She just got to make it work. And the robot explodes. Oh dear, fighting two of those was, was must have been terrible. All right, at our first thing. There's still a ways to walk. All right, no enemies. It's what you love to see. A green swirl. Still gonna have to fight it, but that's a great opening. You love to see two crits as well. Cherry getting accosted by men on fire, and Elliot is through the walk to Gygus. Alright, Gygus is a three phase fight. The first one, you are fighting his cohort. The second phase, you are fighting Gygus himself. And in the third phase, is a prey off. Where Paula needs to pray something. I forget the number, but I think it's nine times before. And if she dies, it's pretty bad for everybody. The only way to defeat Gygus is by praying. I did not see what Elia put in as her meme. Elia taking some inventory checks. Probably making sure everyone's got horns of life. Because someone going down and no way to revive them is very, very, very mean. Because that's this whole walk to Gygus and whole two phases of fight with no way to recover. And this could go very bad. We might just get creamed by Gygus. Otherwise, this run might be over pretty soon. <laughs> you remember what Arborelia wrote. I almost don't want you to share with the class. Large dinosaurs on Cherry's side here. Alright. Ooh. Ooh, we have... <laughs> What's its face? Uh, what is that thing called? I know this boss. The Electro Spectre. Yeah, Spectre can be rude. Stellar Drizzle B. Not a ton of damage. We don't have a ton of life, but not a ton of damage on our characters. Let's see how she handles. She does have to defeat the Electro Spectre while Gygus is just mean to her. Cherry heading into the fight as well. Less equipped, but ready to go. We have done four sanctuaries. We are in the final boss fight now. Oh, things getting a little spicy here on Elio's side. Tulip has taken a dive. Oh, we are we are past go mode at this point. However, Rose is dead, Sage is dead. Our party may not be ready for this. 
and so this might be a bit longer. Depending on how this goes, it can be pulled out still, it's just gonna be a spicy fight on both parties. People keep dying though, so I... We... Alright, that's a death for Cherry. Gonna be sent back to Saturn Valley. She dove right in. I bet you she she's just going. Is she going back for it? Or is she gonna leave? She's saving. And returning. Okay. We are going back for more checks. Ooh. Arbor Elliot in phase two with eight hit points on one character. <laughs> um, if she can get a heal off, we gotta fight. Cherry is going off to do some checks. Not sure where she's teleporting to, but I bet it's Winters. Nope, it's three. And oh my gosh, what a lucky miss on Arbor Elliot's side. Oh my gosh. Cannot grasp the true form. It didn't hit anyone again? What? Oh, okay. Gygus is yelling again. Didn't hit anyone! This might be the luckiest boss fight in the world. Oh, 41 damage. Okay, we want to see lightning. Lightning's generally not very strong. The true form of Gygus' attack is just... It's its a series of either three attacks it can do, give or take. And Lightning is the one you want to see. We do need to get Rose up, but we can wait for Phase 3 for that. And Gygus is going to keep hitting us throughout that phase as well. Trying to get to some PSI. Gygus doesn't have any. That sure looks like a PSI attack to me. Alright, so we're just hitting Gygus. We're burning him as best as we can. We're crying. Cherry is going to do the, the club stoic check here. I am at the edge of my seat with this fight right now. So I'm going to do my best to keep an eye on Cherry's side too. The club ch stoic check means you have to find the phone number so you can make a reservation with the club, and then you need to go into the club and then you can order a cake. All right, making the sage drink water. Didn't hit anyone. Didn't hit anyone. You know, I wish I knew the hit point counts. <laughs> We're in phase three. All we need are praise. All we need to do is pray a lot. I am banging my fist on the table, and I'm sorry if that's loud. This is wild. We're in phase three. Goodbye bitrate soon. We are reviving. Oh my gosh. We have revived Paula. We need to keep Paula alive. And she is going to pray harder than she's ever prayed in her life. Lightning? With one hit point! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I 100% missed what Cherry got. I'm so sorry. Teleport to Delon, that's a character for Cherry. Talking Rock. It's two praise. Keeping people's life up. Basically what you're doing here is just casting life up regardless whether or not you might need it on the off chance she gets hurt. Three praise. Hey look, it's Jeff. We now have Jeff. Who has a pencil eraser. Which does give us access to, um, 
one check. Or one sanctuary. I I I think that's four praise. Oh my gosh. She might go all the way with this. From possibly the spiciest fight I've ever seen with Gygas. I think she's got this in the bag. We're alive. Okay, I guess it's getting down there. It keeps casting lightning, which is just such a beautiful thing. Yeah, this would not be easy if it was casting all the else really anything else cherry is now sending off Pooh's arms and legs and body and has learned to learn psi bomb from sitting on a rock probably not what she wanted to see but she does have access to the lilliput steps Come on, we're at the end here say goodbye to your bitrate He's gonna do it. Come on, everybody! That's it. That's time. I believe that's time. That last prey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy heck. Oh my goodness. With Paula dead, half that fight. And coming back from one hit point. Oh my goodness. What a fight. And we're gonna yell at Arborelia to get in here to talk to me. That's GG on that end. Hello. Oh, hi. Wow, what a fight. <laughs> that was the most intense Gygus fight I've had in a while. Yeah, no, that was incredible. <laughs> just one hit point on Paula there. Just, uh -huh. oh my gosh. Cherry ended up diving directly into the Gygus fight without going shopping first. And now okay. she's off doing checks. Uh-huh. So she was there before me, right? Uh, you both got in within 10 seconds of each other, give or take. Wow. <laughs> By the oh time you finished shopping, she ran in at the same time. Oh my gosh. GG. Oh G heckin' G. Gosh. Thank you. That was back and forth most of the time. I can't even imagine what was going through your mind during that fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. That was that was a heck of a seed. It, it uh, didn't really make us go to too many different places. Just kind of... Uh, really clear path to four sanctuaries yeah it just dragged you to all four right away and then you know you ended up at, at diamond dog pretty quickly mm -hmm. all right cherry's diving back in the gagas or uh, the gagas path at least with fork party members now Ooh. she went and got jeff which yeah. uh oh, I, just, I just missed in the spoiler parade where where jeff was uh he is in the lob which the summer's teleport would gotten would have gotten you jeff Got it. All right, you go to Summers, you get a teleport to uh, hmm. Delon. Wow. Which Summers was open for a very long time for both of you, but yeah. I understand why you wouldn't go there. I'm surprised yeah. nobody went to Winters. Yeah, I could have gone to Winters. That's true. Yeah, I didn't want to go to Summers because I didn't want to do the cutscene, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't even know what Winters was, uh, check-wise. I missed it in the spoiler log. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, the... It said some at some point in this uh, in this spoiler show that we're seeing right now. Gosh, how are you feeling now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. 
All right, Cherry's going back into, that's the second teleporter, I believe. Maybe the first. Almost back at Gagas. Yeah, Cherry ended up going into Moonside after getting the hint that it was zombie paper, which was a dead check at that point. Wouldn't have gotten us anything because we already had access to uh, Saturn Valley, and that cost her some time. She ended up doubling back a few times on things. Oh, because oh, she has access to the Lilliput Steps, which is the sixth Your Sanctuary location right now. Oh. So yeah. somewhere that Winter's check or somewhere in Scrabble or something. Maybe the Tent Boss or Berglund Park would have gotten us access to a fourth, a uh, fifth year sanctuary. Yep. I bet she could handle the sixth sanctuary if she went and tried it, but you know, looks like she is almost a Gygus. Yep. Yeah, I thought you were going down in that fight easily. Mm -hmm. and would have to go wander around again because after that phase one was divisive uh -huh. and phase two was scary and then just to get all of those didn't hit anyone's in phase three yeah or, and all those lightnings that you got instead of actually murderous attacks mm -hmm. Ooh. yeah yeah like when when Paula was down to one hit point, that was okay. I still had Horns of Life. The part that was most scary is going into phase two when Ness had um, just eight hit points and everyone else was dead. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we did brush our teeth on one character this scene. Mm -hmm. and then the first attack... If... Excuse me. That next phase, while well, Ness had eight hit points, just didn't hit anyone. Oh, baby. Uh -huh. All right, Cherry fighting Gagas, phase one with Electro Spectre, who is a mean jerk. She didn't do a whole lot when she left, but I think it might have given her an edge at least. She got Jerf. Mm -hmm. uh, does Jerf have any good supplies? I have no idea. And I'm not sure if she did any, um... No, it doesn't look like Jerf has really anything right now. Hmm. And I don't think she did a shopping trip at all. Yeah, I never saw an item that sounded like a, a Jeff item. Yeah, and like the rockets were on a spell, bombs on another person now. I mean, the offense spritz is a chef item, but not a not a very helpful one. <laughs> <laughs> the HP sucker is on someone. <laughs> Did we, are we using the Viper? All right. We're throwing snakes at people. Oh my gosh, that might actually be a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless it hits Gygus. <laughs> Jerf is down. Unsure what happened to the snake we threw. And we're getting some star storms. Paula goes down. Ness is live. Nope, there we go. Yeah, I bet she could go for the five sanctuaries. Don't you need magic ant for that too? Yeah, you do. Which we don't have any access to Magic Ant, but I'm willing to bet Magic Ant access uh, should be somewhere reasonably close. Oh, you get you get Magic Ant access after five sanctuaries. Oh, then she has access to a fifth easily here. It is yeah. going to be sanctuary number six, but she doesn't know that yet. She does need to go to Happy Happy to get there, though. Oh, like walk there from Tucson. Yeah, which means you need to walk to Tucson. Mm -hmm. Looks like that might be your plan. Yep. She started walking down this tunnel a little bit earlier and turned around um, to go fight Gygus immediately. Yeah. Funny thing is, both of us have gotten a lot faster at this randomizer since we submitted. Sure have. 
Cool. I love how you both ended up at Carbon Dog as your uh, third boss that you tried to go to. Nice. And Carbon Dog just murdered both of you pretty handily. Uh huh. But she was ahead for a while, mostly because she she made the choices that went her got her to sanctuaries quicker. And following that critical path is in this seed specifically was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Alright, she is skipping the Berglund Park check. Checks even. And going straight to the little footsteps probably. Maybe we'll rescue Flying Man, but we don't have the key. <laughs> So I think this has to be Flying Man. Maybe. Could be a teddy bear in jail. And uh, I believe the reason both of you, and I don't blame you, is that this is a heck of a walk to try to get to. Uh -huh. I said at this point as well, I'd love to hear from Tech if they want us to move on, if they want to let this run to its conclusion, whatever they feel like doing. If uh, you get a heads up from the runner's channel or something. And if our host has anything to say. Uh, sure, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little. Welcome back, everyone. There was just a brief team meeting here. Don't worry. Um, we have the heads up that we are going to let Cherry finish, which is amazing because we get to probably see a different uh, different route to the conclusion of the seed. So as I mentioned very early on, uh, and I brought up a bunch of times because why not? Uh, there are multiple win conditions to this randomizer. Number one is you can go get four sanctuaries and defeat Gygus, which we saw Arborelia do. Uh, there is another where you do five sanctuaries, you get a teleport to Magicant, and you fight the boss of Magicant. Uh, which is a special place that's like a evil... I don't know, what is, it's like inside your mind or something. I haven't finished the vanilla game yet. And uh, the alternative option is just go and do a sixth sanctuary. No boss. It just ends on the spot there. Well, you, you know, you get the boss of Sanctuary 6, but that's it. And that ends your game too in victory. So it's kind of a you, you, it's a little bit of a gamble, and you can kind of feel if you're not quite up the snuff to fighting Gygus, you can go and just do another sanctuary instead. Now, naturally, when I do something like this, and I go to uh, Magic Hand, it's going to be Carbon Dog sitting in the Magic Hand throne, because Carbon Dog chases me around and hates me personally, but, you know, it's okay. So I believe these enemies that Cherry's going to be running into are in, like, the 40s or something, level-wise. Because this is Sanctuary 6. Maybe close to the 50s? So they will they will be a little bit dicey and mean. All right, mechanized pokey watching shop. <laughs> Sorry, you keep starting to talk and I keep cutting yeah, you off. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I expect her to just save and go for it. Um, you know, she could steal a bunch of, like, DX water or something, which would be slightly useful, but probably not worth the time to steal it. Yeah. Or even like you pay could... for it at this point. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's $44,000, yeah. yeah. Actually... <laughs> Because at this point you can just you can just get killed by the boss and you'll keep the items you stole if that's not inaccurate. I think so. Yeah. Also, rain pendant. That's really good. Yeah, we are in a six tier area at this point, so we're gonna start to see some really good shops here. Because much like logic enemies levels and everything, the deeper into logic, the better items you find. Sounds like an obvious statement, but. So we're going to do some shopping. Uh, I don't believe she is aware this is still the sixth area yet. Yeah, she mentioned that uh, she definitely uses shops as a way of, of judging the depth of things. Uh, uh, that's smart. Oh, so that was the buzz buzz check, the Saturn Valley teleport. I missed it completely. But yeah, like. Seeing things like the rain pendant, I think she knows she's going into someplace a little bit intense. <laughs> At least you can t uh, you can buff up yourself a bit there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a lot of hoodlums. <laughs> oh no. I think Jeff has a, a flash item of some sort. So he's got the flashier grenade. Uh huh. I figured that was a one use thing. Oh, well, looks like it. But it looked like it kind of helped in this situation. And now, now Jeff has kind of nothing left to do. <laughs> Can, oh, a submission hold. Yeah, these these people are mean. Oh. -ho. I love that we both chose bees for the uh, the spell name. <laughs> if she can win this combat, which I'm pretty confident she'll do, someone's gonna gain a whole lot of the levels. <laughs> However, they keep calling for help, and that's less exciting. Oh, well, a few people are dying. Unsure who got smashed there. <laughs> Jerf's down. One more down. <laughs> Please stop oh, calling no, for help. More. Please stop calling for help. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have what? Killed seven of these? Eight of these now? <laughs> I just need to see this combat come out victorious to see the amount of experience. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that's why she's making sure to finish it. <laughs> that's mortal damage. That's... I... 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 Frame. No! <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're both weak because she was attacking the one in the middle for a while and then moved on to the one on the left. One down. Come on, we got this. Hey! 45,000 experience. All right, no problem. Amazing. Yeah, those are some levels. We are now upset that we have been hurt so much. No problem here. Okay. I assume we're going for a free heal, or where are we going now? We're just grabbing the levels and go straight to Gygus? All right, go into Oof. Gygus. Uh, yeah, does the, huh, does the life up action bring people back? I think it does. Okay. 
Didn't know that. I would have had to make an extra stop at Dr. Saturn. But yeah, okay, that works. No save, though. Yeah, so I guess she's decided after all that, she's probably leveled enough, leveled up enough to uh, deal with Gygus Phase 1. The big issue there is that her gear is a little on the lower side, and she does have the, the newer pendants and whatnot, but Paula didn't survive that fight, so she didn't get that experience. Yeah. So we'll see if she can keep Paula alive. Yeah, so she never went to the uh, to the Saturn Valley bonus shop for the Platinum Bands, right? Nope. She dove straight in. Which, you know, bold move and could have yep. worked out. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, it's a race. You take chances. Sometimes. And uh, I need to check my laundry, so Arborelli, you're in charge. All right. Yeah, she's up against this nuclear reactor robot, uh, which its main ability is healing itself, so you just need to destroy it in a few turns. And then it just explodes out of spite once you beat it. And uh, it's really fine to handle alone, and of course it's really mean if you have to uh, fight another enemy at the same time as it, because you want to get rid of the enemy that's healing everything. But then you get the explosion in the middle of the battle. Fortunately, this is just two Octobots. I mean, just two Octobots. I mean, Octobots are not the easiest things. One thing I'm noticing is she can use a lot more spells on the way through here because she's leveled up enough to have a lot more uh, side points than I had. Nice butterfly. Oh, you want it, you want it. Oh no. be a very good time for a butterfly to restore some side points. Just trying to get some good spawns here. Peeking carefully. There we go. She's got a clear path to Gygus. Oh, there's a butterfly inside the Gygus room. I didn't know that could ever happen. What a great place for a butterfly. So I assume that she heals up. Yep, just eat the random food. I love random food. All right, last minute checks. Are we ready for Gagas? We are ready for Gagas. Moving back in. All right. So, yeah. The big problem with Electro Spectre is you don't want to use magic attacks on it because it reflects them. Um, and like if you use enough small magic attacks on it, then you'll wear down its magical shield. But you probably don't have enough turns to do that before Gygus' Star Storms absolutely destroy you. <laughs> We're getting little magics, looks like. Mm -hmm. Tulip had a uh, Psy Shield as an option, also. Stellar Drizzle? Is that a... what is Stellar Drizzle? Is that just Star Storm? Maybe? No. But it's not like Star Storm Iota or something. I don't... 
I guess it must be something that... Is there a stellar drizzle in the vanilla game? Is it something that some of the starmen do? I don't know. I, I know that uh, the randomizer adds, like, um, kind of smaller levels of spells than exist in the vanilla game, like Starstorm Iota and Starstorm Epsilon, which are less powerful than Starstorm Alpha. Because Starstorm Alpha is like the base level you get in the vanilla game, and it's pretty powerful. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, then there's also things that show up in the randomizer, like PSI Refrigerate, which is like a really minor freeze spell. <laughs> so I wonder if Stellar Drizzle is sort of like that somehow. I don't actually know. Moving into oh phase gosh. two. We're in phase two. two. And all you need to do is hit Gygus as hard as you can. And keep yourself alive. Gygus has a variety of attacks. A lot of them are mean, some are less mean. I like Jeff's one damage smash attacks. He's trying. <laughs> Gonna protract this guy. And really, you just want to blow Gygus up as hard as you possibly can here while maintaining your hit points. There is... This is the last time your attacks matter. Just... If we did use the protractor on Gygus. I like it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Gygus, hold still so I can figure out what <laughs> angle you're at. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. Alright. Tulip's gonna be a powerhouse here. Tulip is very highly leveled at this point. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, good news that is that uh, Tulip has healing gamma, which can bring people back to life. So, if uh, mm -hmm. Buttercup goes down here, um, it's uh, it's actually okay. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Buttercup's got the bottle rocket spell, so mm -hmm. it's gonna blow up Gygus. Seeing a lot of one damages, and I'm not sure where they're coming from. Yeah, probably Jerf. Ooh. He's that bottle rocket. Ooh. Oh. Huh. Yeah, some rocket spell's not working very well. Well, we're there. We're in phase three. All we need to do is heal and pray. I think I think Cherry's got this. Mm-hmm. If you can get to phase three, closing the deal is usually not that bad. Yeah. Unless you're Elia and you have the spiciest beginning of phase three. <laughs> oh no. Buttercup's asleep. <laughs> Let's see if something can't jolt her awake. Okay, freeze bombs. She should wake up pretty quickly because this randomizer does have a thing where anything that disables an enemy or a player, they'll recover from it usually the next turn. Also, apparently healing beta does it, and I had come to the conclusion that it didn't because I used healing beta on, on my Paula and she didn't wake up, but it's because she had two things wrong with her. Oh no. Alright, we got one prey. We got everyone's asleep again. Spending Psy to keep people alive that I don't think need to be alive anymore. Mm -hmm. So at this point, unless Jeff has healing items in his inventory, He's expendable. Sage, if he's got healing items, poo. Expendable. Yeah. And let him go. Yeah, I mean, Sage is another source of healing spells, at least. Mm-hmm. Jerf has, I think, never done a single useful thing in the run except, uh, except throw that, uh, flash bomb. He measured Gagas. True. <laughs> 
That's, was that two or three? Important advancements in Gygus research. <laughs> oh, we're asleep again! What is this oh, luck? No. Oh, well, that woke her up. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a little bit of hit points. And some praying. Belch played for Tulip in his demise. I mean, friends. I love the floppy there at the end of the line. Great for Tulip and his wallet. Alright, she's throwing heels at Buttercup left and right here. Mm -hmm. We are almost there on time time. Got some flying mans. All right, these are the last two preys. One more. And that's time, right? Yep. Well, in the speed run, it's on. Yeah. I don't know. You win, but it's yeah, last yeah. Uh, last prey in the randomizer. Yep. She has won. One hundred and forty, roughly. Not the bees. <laughs> GG to Cherry. Gee. She can join us in here anytime she wants. You know, I think the thing that really made the seat is you buying stuff. Just gearing up before the final fight. Uh-huh. I've given her the heads up that she can join us here and say some words. But in the meantime... The floor is yours, Arborelia. All right. Uh, is is Cherry joining us? I told her to. Okay. So, oh, there she is. Well, that was a rude scene. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. She was fast uh, and furious. Yeah, With a lot the of furious. The, hey, the, the guy guess fight was just not fun. GG though. <laughs> uh huh. Golly. Yeah. All right. So I I hear that. Uh, I hear that we went into the Gygus area at the same time, the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh. We did, huh? Yep. Yeah. Elliot uh, did I some shopping. Mm -hmm. Elliot did some shopping there beforehand. You were both around the same level, and you just ran straight in. And I yeah, think that made I all the tend to do that. I usually don't have issues, but today we did a little spicier than usual, and uh, it shows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just barely holding on in the Gygus fight. I got through the first phase with most characters dead, with Ness with, H, uh, with 8 hit points, and then Gygus whiffed his next attack, so that was okay. Uh, how do you revive people? Uh, Horns of Life is what I was using. Ah, uh, okay, so you were buying secret herbs and trading them then, okay. N no, you just, um, you just buy no, horns I went to the... the... Oh. I went to the... Uh, the Saturn Valley bonus shop. Um, the the third shopkeeper that shows up late in the game. Oh, that's after Grapefruit Falls. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. I gotta remember to do that then. Yeah. That always... Good. That shows up as soon as you have your fourth or you open Gygus. It'll be there. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. <laughs> well, I, I learn new things every day about PK Scramble. 
It's such an incredible randomizer. Shout out to the devs of it. This has been an absolutely delightful race. Thank you for having me commentate. If you have closing marks, now's the time. Plug yourself. Plug Nami. Hey. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be get to be part of this event. Um, you know, supporting Nami and supporting mental health. And uh, yeah, I like randomizers. I play a lot of randomizers. Maybe if you like randomizers, you come over to my channel. Or Cherries. Uh, I play randomizers. I'm Cherry. Um, I also play played up. I have an unhealthy addiction uh, addiction to that. It's uh, very much a randomizer at heart, but it's like cooked sir uh, no, overcooked, but a randomizer. Uh, overcooked thanks for having me and shout outs to Nami. Thanks so much for having us all. I've been your commentator, Flannel Pat. Take care. I'm gonna throw it back to our host. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Y'all are wonderful. <laughs>